Hello everyone, my name is Pacha and welcome back to a new episode of Wahat Jamila, our desert series, our desert sandbox zoo series for the new arid animal pack. Or is it already new or is it already old again? I don't know. I think it's almost a month ago now since we got the pack. And yeah, finally in today's episode we are gonna build for the flagship animal of this pack, so the um, yeah, marketing animal for this pack, if you don't know what flagship means, the one that you see in front of the pack that you see most advertised for. And this is of course the dromedary camel, an animal we have been waiting for for a very, 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 very long time, I should say. Um, all beginning with the, the launch of the base game already because we had a dromedary camel sign in the game but no dromedary camel we only had the bacterian camel and people were wondering what just what this could mean if they just used a random camel png and turned it into a sign or if there was a deeper meaning behind it and even more suspicions were raised when we got the africa pack or north africa pack i always can't remember if it's africa pack or north africa pack but yeah the Africa pack, let's call it that, that we got in the year, I think, 2022, um, if I'm not mistaken, because this pack came with four animals and none of them were a dromedary camel, but, and here is the big but, um, they had a bunch of dromedary camel signs in it, um, five, I think, in f oh, four, four or five in, in, in total, um, were dromedary camel signs, which is, I mean, fitting for a for a pack that has a lot of scenery fitting to um, deserts and northern Africa and Egypt but also weird because usually when we get animal signs they are for the animals in the pack but we didn't got a dromedary camel as I said and this made people very suspicious and many of us believe we will get this animal for an anniversary uh, where we usually get a free animal at least we got a uh, free animal in the last two years but yeah um, we didn't got it, we now got it with this new pack as the flagship animal, as the poster child of this pack. And now we or I'm gonna build for it in Wahad Jamila. And I'm not only building a habitat for it, I'm own also building a camera ride attraction uh, for it or with it, uh, I should say. Because it's not for the camels, it's for the people. And which will be on the left of this habitat between the sand cat exhibit and the camel exhibit there will be a small path and a small ticket booth and then as you will see in a few minutes there will be an open plaza kind of thing sand roundabout where you can have a ride on a camel and yeah enjoy the desert and feel like a desert explorer like Lawrence from Arabia or something like that um, on a camel's back and this is of course possible because all our camels are domesticated camels and because, fun fact, uh, there are no wild dromedary camels anymore in the world. They went extinct or we made them went, went extinct uh, a long time ago, already in the ancient times when Romans still were a thing. We drove the species to extinction and only the domesticated yeah, type species um, variation uh, survived until this day and um, one could argue that there are wild camels in Australia but this is not a the case they are not domesticated in a sense but they're also not wild they are feral uh, meaning they were once domesticated but then they were left in the yeah, wilderness and became sort of wild again but are still genetically uh, the domesticated variant and why are there camels in Australia? Another fun fact, camels were brought to Australia in the 1800s, um, so when we discovered Australia and started to colonize it, because Australia is 90% or oh wait, 80% <laughs> um, is, 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 they are, consists of deserts and what better animal to use in a desert than the ship of the desert basically or uh, since that is what we call it in german the desert ship um or the desert horse uh, itself the camel 
with its ability to walk for days on days without drinking water and withstanding the sand and temperatures of the hot Saharan desert, so why not bring them to Australia? But then when we, yeah, when Australia got their tra railroads and trains and, and cars and everything, these animals were not longer needed and they were left to exist in on their self on their own and now they are feral and roam the Australian desert on their own. I don't know if there are any problems with that um, concerning natives, wildlife species and camels, I um, haven't looked into that. But knowing Australia's history with uh, foreign animals that come to the place, um, I can guess that there's a problem. But yeah, at the moment we are building the roundabout or the walking space for the guests where the guests can make some small tours. I was initially thinking if I would do like a real desert tour where they can go out to the uh, real desert behind the zoo and have a maybe a day long journey or something like that. And maybe I will add something like that on a later point when we are through with all the DLC animals and I have more yeah, relaxing time to do some more wild stuff. Um, I will maybe add a second tour where you can book a tour to go out on an adventure in the desert for a couple days. Maybe some then I would need something like a base camp or a supply store, stuff like that. So we only have the small variant at the moment. And yeah, we are now building also the shelter for the uh, camel and talking about the shelter and the inspiration for this habitat in general. Um, let's just talk about the shelter. There is not really a backstage area shelter um, because you don't really need one for um, camels for camels in general, bacterian and dromedary because they are, if they have uh, yeah, a roof over their head and some pairs of sleep, they are basically fine because they are very sturdy animals. So that's why this is a very open top, not top open top, but open front shelter uh, in the end uh, with not much of a backstage or backstage holding stuff like that. Um, if we would want to separate the animals, we can still have them uh, in the yeah, walking pen to the left where we also have the guest tours. So if we would kind of separate babies and offspring and, and, and adult, uh, males and such things, we could do that there. Or we could put them in the second enclosure that will be coming that will be coming next week in next week's video because this habitat is yeah uh, at least this side of the habitat is loosely inspired by the one for the scimitar oryx or the I think not only the oryx uh, antelope in Berlin Zoo and the second part because this habitat all in Berlin is yeah, connected to another one with, I think, ostriches, antelopes and zebras, but I can't be 100% sure. I only saw the zebras when I was there. Um, they are both connected and I want also to do that because they also have a really cool African um, arch architecture to it, which you might already have seen if you watched uh, Lider not Lighters, if you watched Caesar's zoo series, uh, Caesar Creates. Uh, he already kind of recreated that area um, that I'm also inspiring or that I'm basing my F my area here on in his zoo series in Elm City Zoo and uh, Elm Hill Zoo. I hope I don't mess this name up. I'm very sorry if I did. I'm not don't m mean any ill meaning. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, he kind of create also already created the building um, there for his zoo. And I just found out about this because he released an awesome video about the Somali wild ass. If you haven't checked it out, really do that. He is an amazing creator. And I just saw in his, when I was watching this video, I saw the building or the habitat in the background of the, there, of his Somali wild ass building. And then I thought, ah, this was uh, something I wanted to do for Wahad Jamila. But I um, will not, yeah, hesitate because of that and I will not go back because of that. I will still try my best to build my own version of it um, because I'm, he also already knows that I'm also trying to recreate it and he wished me good luck with it and yeah, I, I think I will need it but I, of course I will never uh, yeah, get to the same level of detail and mastery and building like he does. He is I don't know. He, if you haven't seen what Caesar creates, does uh, definitely check it out. It's amazing. Anyways, enough fan um, fan talking here. We are here from my building. Uh, we are building, of course, as I said. Uh, now the little ticket booth where you can buy the ticket for the camera ride. But I was not talking about the 
ticket booth I was talking about. The second habitat, exactly, there will be a second habitat connected to this habitat and you will later see in the real time part where these two habitats connect. You can already, you already saw it a little bit in the um, speed build where I, you know, I was placing all the gates and everything. And this habitat next to them will feature the Dharma Gazelle and the Adex, I think. So both of, yeah, both antelopes are pointed out from my list. They are finished with next week's video. Um, maybe I also throw in an ostrich or two. I don't know yet how much space I will give them and if it's appropriate to add another animal. And then the animal, an only animal left is the black rhino. And I already have also plans for this animal, um, which will also be in a multi-species habitat. And some of you might say, huh, black rhino multi-species habitat. Uh, yeah, it has been done a couple times. In a couple of zoos I went to uh, where we have uh, other species together with the black rhino. So I'm not too worried about that. Right now we are building these stairs that you can go up to climb on the camel's back. Uh, because if you are maybe a shorter person or if you yeah, not, are not as athletically built, um, you can use these stairs to get up to the camel uh, without any problem. And because they are very gentle and very calm animals usually um, this is not a problem but right now I will now leave you most likely why we are building the shelter for the queue because first time I'm building queue um, yeah it was really cool and I really had I'm not from the planet coaster community guys um, or I'm, I've never played really planet coaster so building queues wasn't really my thing or something I'd experienced with what so I tried something out but I figured we would need a queue here um, if we have um, a lot of people standing um, in line for the camera rides otherwise it would get a little bit um, yeah, confusing and everything and we would maybe scare the animals and such things so also policy of course in my zoo is if an animal doesn't want to work anymore if they want to have some rest they we give them some rest and we have enough camels there to um, yeah replace the camel and have another camel come in for this one so that the other one can relax a little bit but yeah i was saying i will leave you now with the rest of the speed build with some music um don't wor don't wonder if the second the last part of this video will be a bit faster than this one um it was during my live stream and i was building really fast all the foliage and stuff i don't know how i uh, why i was so fast in building that but yeah don't wonder about that but yeah rest of the mu of the video with some music and then i see you in the speed not the speed build the showcase at the end of the video so thanks for listening so far
All right, here we are now in the showcase at the end of the video. And this time we are not starting from a known point in the zoo, we are starting from the end of the habitat actually. And we are walking towards a known point of the zoo, which is the sand cat habitat and the um, porcupine habitat. And this is now the finished yeah, camel bacteria, not bacteria, dromedary camel habitat. And we right have one very cool variant of the new camel here, the bipolar variant. I also managed to snatch uh, a yeah, um, melanistic one. I think this is this one. Let's check. Yeah, this is my melanistic one. Really cool that they have so many new variants now. And sometimes you will hear loud barking in the background or loud noise in the background. Uh, these are the camels. And yeah, there it is. <laughs> really cool. I love how they look. They did, Fronty did an amazing job on um, creating them. And there's a new one coming in. Hello. But yeah, this is now the habitat. I'm still not too sure about this. Um, stone sandstone wall over here if it looks too comic-y and unrealistic um, this ruined stone wall look over here uh, might change it in the future but for now it stays and uh, it has some some things to it but yeah really really like how this turned out with the water mode in front of here um, which is also something they do in berlin Zoological Park in Berlin Zoo with their oryx antelopes. Don't ask me why the uh, animals don't escape. Um, most likely because they don't like to swim, um, or there is some something in the water that I didn't saw uh, on my visit. But yeah, in the background we can also see the little shelter where our camels are sleeping at the moment. As I said, open front shelter because we don't really need uh, a closed backstage area. And yeah. Um, if we follow the path, we of course come to our small porcupine friends over here. Hello. And we get to this new small path right behind the sand cat exhibit with a nice camel statue over here. And another little viewing opportunity where you can see the camel scratching and everything. But if we follow this path, <laughs> we also see our uh, melanistic one, we get to the little camera ride se section where you can buy your tickets, hello, and then you can yeah, follow the queue over here, da -da -da -dum, da -da -da -dum. you can get on the steps, uh, we ignore that, that was <laughs> from a testing, <laughs> we ignore that, <laughs> yeah, we can get on the steps, If you, then would, there would be a camel over here, you can get, get hop on, onto the camel, and then you have this little ride around here, uh, maybe it's for more for kids or smaller children uh, or for younger adults, something like that. And then for the older um, adults, guests and everything, there would be this, yeah, ex this extra camel ride into the desert thingy or something like that. Maybe, I, I don't know if I will add something like that or not. We will see. But yeah, um, let's show the shelters while the camel is very cutely playing with this ball. Um, very cute. Yeah, as I said, not really something into the shelter, just some different boxes that you could potentially, I think, box off with some gates or any or something like, like some fences. You could uh, close them off if you needed to. And then, of course, no backstage yet. Um, no backstage props yet. Um, they will be added once I do all the backstages in a future video or live stream, whatever. And you guys are really, really loud. God, my goodness. But yeah, the gate here to a little camel pen and yeah this is the camel habitat and right over there where you see these two bars hanged in into the hinges um, this will be the connection to the other habitat which will be on this side the camels can't will in the end not be able to go through this gate so they will stay on this side but the antelopes are free to move to the camel habitat and back and forth as they want or as they please so this will look really cool, I hope, in the end, and I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you also look forward to that. But yeah, this was it for this week's video, and if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider giving it a like, and if you feel especially happy, you know what is coming, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Um, only, I think, 25 left until we hit 1000 subscribers, so... Yeah, your chance now to support this channel and I, you would make me really, really happy and would, you would make my day. But anyways, have a great time. I hope I see you in the next video. And until then, 
enjoy your time, stay safe, and bye-bye everyone.